The following program was recorded at Works Annual Conference in Orlando, Florida. I'm pleased to welcome Supply Chain Brain Editor Emeritus, Jean Murphy. Hello. Today I'm speaking with Steve Johnson, Principal at Johnson Stevens Consulting. Welcome, Steve. Thank you, Jean. Appreciate it. Glad to be here. I know you uh, did a, a workshop or a seminar at work yesterday on motivating today's employee. Talk to us a little bit about how today's employee is different from the kind of person we saw in the workforce maybe 10 years ago. Well, one of the things that we, we saw yesterday in our roundtable is uh, motivating today's employee takes more than just money. Uh, older generations, you could kind of, as we put it, uh, uh, give money out, increases out, and then also uh, basically give holidays, week of the fourth, as they used to say. And now with the uh, newer generations that are out there, the Gen X, the Gen Y uh, generations, uh, you have to do more than that. There's feedback, there's uh, uh, letting them know what the career path is a lot more deeply than before. And uh, so there was a lot of good discussion uh, in the group uh, about those points. Is there a difference in the work ethic, as us older people like to say? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, it's, I don't know so much a work ethic, but it's a work style. Um, as you know, there's a lot of competing interests for uh, today's younger workforces out there. They, they grow up pretty much with computers under their skin, and, and uh, well, most of us know how to kind of handle that. Um, we have to be careful because there's a lot of multitasking that occurs, there's a lot of things that enter into their lives that are important other than work, such as social media, Facebook, just about everybody's on that, so uh, LinkedIn, things such as that, other social media, Twitter. Um, so, so the point is, how do we get our arms around these folks, provide feedback to them in a meaningful way, a very specific way, so that they know how they're doing as opposed to just you're doing a great job, but at the same time embrace their other interests and also hold their attention. Which is, which is hard to do when they're multitasking. So does social media play a role in that? Are you actually using social media in a positive way? Well, it's not, that was a big topic in the group because essentially most distribution centers are warehouses. Obviously, you can't have social media out there on the floor if uh, somebody's driving a forklift. It'd be like texting while driving or worse. <laughs> so, so anyway, most folks right now are not allowing that, obviously, in, in a warehouse environment, but they are allowing it on breaks. Uh, folks get it out of their, you know, get their smartphones out of their lockers and they keep up that way. Uh, management's using it with their supervisors, however, in the office setting to communicate, you know, to connect better, um, to actually reach out and find out better ways to do things in the workplace. So are there other aspects of this generation in terms of what makes them tick that employers need to understand? Yeah, I, I think the real thing that, um, that, that came about with the group here was if you are, take great pains to be very careful to explain uh, the, the job functions, to cross-train, to uh, empower today's generations to do more than just one process, in other words, make them responsible, for the entire task that they're doing so that they know that they make a difference. Um, that can make them tick and can help them even more than just compensation. On the other hand, there's other things that, are, that they're battling with out there. Uh, we have a phenomenon called the gray collar or the fact that the baby boomers are retiring a little bit slower because of the economy uh, having that impact. And so the Gen X and the Gen Yers are ready for the baby boomers, boomers to move on, but the baby boomers aren't quite moving out of the way quick enough. So you have to get real creative about making sure that folks are included in, uh, in how they uh, uh, structure their job and in how they, they work each day. Uh, in the round table, you mentioned something called, is it presenteeism, the opposite of absenteeism? Tell us about that. It sure is. Uh, presenteeism is, is, a, is a word that was coined uh, just, just really during the 2009 economic downturn. And what that is, is about one in every four workers today are looking over their shoulder, basically waiting for the next layoff. And what that's done is that's caused us to lose productivity uh, in, in warehouses and distribution oper uh, center operating environments. Um, it's estimated that about two and a half billion uh, work uh, man days, uh, person days, were lost 
in 2009 due to this phenomenon. When I polled the group yesterday to see if that was maybe receding because we're in 2011, um, they still see that as a, as, a, as a problem out there. Folks are not quite giving their all because they're, they're really worried about whether they're going to be there three, four months from now because they've seen so much uh, impact in the workplace because of the economy. What has changed in terms of loyalty, both from a worker standpoint, from an employer standpoint? Well, we've seen a, the paradigm shift that we've seen flip around completely is it used to be that working for a large corporation, you'd work for 20, 30 years, be very loyal, you know, you'd get your nice pension, maybe a gold watch, things like that, and then you'd retire. Um, but you'd feel very secure in that, and, and my parents felt that way, and to some extent I did as well in the early parts of my career. Now it seems like you're safer working with a smaller organization. Um, I, for instance, have an engineering firm of 20, 20 engineers, and they like it because they know the guy who signs the check. And basically they also feel like they're closer to the pulse of what's really going to happen. So we're seeing smaller organizations draw people uh, with job security more than the larger corporations did. And that is a truly a shift. And a lot of the larger companies that we talked to yesterday, they're having to deal with that in a real way because folks are distracted. They're worried that this may be the next warehouse that gets closed or consolidated or maybe its function, its mission gets changed. Uh, so, so we see a lot of that happening today in that shift uh, between small corporations and, and larger ones. Interesting. Uh, another um uh, concept that you mentioned is what, gray collar. Is that what right. you were talking about a minute well, ago about well, the retirees? Yeah, yeah gray collar, it, it, you know, really applies to the fact that baby boomers retired, but there's some coming back into the workplace because they have to work because essentially a lot of their uh, retirement, 401k, things like that, were decimated in 2009 in the economy. And so they find that, look, I can't stay out of the workplace. I need to come back in. A lot of those folks are coming back in as underemployed type people. In other words, it might have been somebody who was an executive or a manager somewhere, and they're willing to come back in and work in a warehouse as an order selector. Um, the, the, the struggle that companies are having with that, and the roundtable discussed it, was uh, the group discussed that they're very reliable and dependable employees, but obviously the Gen Y and the Gen X people don't really like to see them coming back into the workplace because they kind of thought that they'd moved on. And so uh, that's the gray collar phenomenon. It's not, it's pervasive kind of in pockets. You're not seeing it everywhere, but you do see it uh, in, certain, in certain sectors uh, of, of warehousing and distribution. And uh, while it's, like I said, very dependable group, um, the, uh, the, the Gen Y and the Gen X, those, those generations, the millennials, are not real happy about it. Right. You mentioned earlier that uh, younger workers are not as, as um tied to pay or that's not their primary motivator. Does pay for performance still work and, and what other incentives can you offer these workers? Right. Pay for performance still works really well as long as you tie it to specific performance. And we like to use the example uh, yesterday we had everybody raise their hand, would you go to a baseball game without a scoreboard? Well, nobody raised their hand, but yet there's a lot of places that are you go to work every day and there's no scoreboard. And uh, so essentially giving them individual feedback every day is something this generation, this set of generations would like. They would like incentive pay or bonus pay tied to above, above the standard performance. So that's something my company works a lot with implementing in, in warehouses and, and distribution centers. So money is important to them, but they kind of feel like they negotiate that up front and then we need to do other things with them to make sure life's meaningful. We get questions about sustainability and, and what's your green policy and you know they're basing some of their decisions on those things whereas you know previous generations would have kind of first of all it's a new concept to them but second of all they would have just kind of it, it, it'd be a side issue and to these folks it's important you know are you friendly to the environment because if you're not I don't want to necessarily work for your company. Right. Um, so now I would say pay for, pay for performance is very strong and uh, continues to be a strong component and something that you know can be used very strongly to uh, help in the compensation uh, part of the part of the world there. 
Is it true also that these workers are less willing to sacrifice their family uh, time in, as opposed to what workers may have been willing to do years ago? Absolutely. We had a couple of examples yesterday that was basically, you know, we, we want our 40 hours, we want to get paid a lot, but we also want to, you know, I, I don't talk to me too much about overtime. So that really, it's kind of a, 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 across the board, it's not really a fast and hard rule, but we're seeing more of that. Um, they would like that work-life balance. It's important to them. It's important to everybody, but it's very important to them that they get that. Um, pay for performance helps because a lot of folks can go in and earn incentive pay and then leave a little bit earlier and then make about as much money as they made if they had worked 40 hours, but they get six or seven hours more with their family during the week or with their girlfriend or, who, or boyfriend, whatever. Um, so, so we do see that uh, very much as something that's one of their priorities. All right. Well, thank you very much for being with us today. Well, thank you, Jean. Appreciate it. I've been speaking with Steve Johnson of Johnson Stevens Consulting. Thank you for watching.